Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Today we're going to work with kind of conscious walking, a walking practice that I will lead you through. Um, why a walking practice? Well, we could say that uh, it's like the sitting practice, but you're moving, <laughs> which is true. So <clears throat> ancient, ancient peoples, uh, all kinds of different uh, sacred practices have revol revolved around walking. The Native Americans, the Tibetans, even in biblical times, it said, such a beautiful um, picture for me, um, is after uh, Christ was crucified, John um, took Mary to Turkey where she lived the rest of her life for 11 years. And she set up, or he set up for her, because he was her guardian at that time, uh, he set up for her the Stations of the Cross. Some of you know about them, some of you don't, but they're, they're moments of uh, Christ's passion. Uh, this man who was uh, everything that happened to him uh, are parables, we could say, teachings, teachings for humanity. So being unjustly accused, uh, being... Uh, mocked, being judged, all the things that we go through on some level. Anyway, he went through a lot of them. <clears throat> and we can use them as teachings for us. So anyway, there were many of these stations, and he built these for her. And for the last 11 years of her life, she walked them every day. So it is a walking meditation. So I first learned uh, this kind of walking in a Zen center, and then I've come to find it in so many other places. Uh, a while back there, there was a, a um, what did you say, a groundswell <laughs> of uh, a thing called, uh, young people called it grounding or earthing, that was it, earthing. And so this is an earthing practice. <laughs> and you can do it with bare feet, you can do it with socks, you can do it with shoes. Uh, you can do it inside a, a building, um, but it's really quite wonderful to do uh, outside in a park, in your yard, uh, on a mountain, at a beach, whatever. It's a, a way of coming inside through the bottoms of the feet. Now these are hands, but they're very similar to feet because they have this, we could pretend this is the foot and this is the sole of the foot, the heel of the foot and the toes. So as we walk upon the earth, we can have the, you can have two different ways of doing, and they, they both are quite different, actually. One is to have the heel touching first, and then feeling the middle, and then feeling the toes. And resting there, resting there, and resting there, maybe for a whole breath, maybe for two whole breaths, listening into your uprightness, your breath, I talk to the earth, and then the heel lifts, and the next step begins again. Now you can also do this, which has a very different effect, I think, of beginning with the toes, and then the middle, and then the heel. So those are two ways of using the foot. Uh, it's best not to make giant strides, but to do, you know, like a half a step. And just, it, the, the thing is not to go anywhere, but just to be where we are on the earth.
even if it's earth that's under a floor, to breathe, to rest in the support of the earth. Now Thich Nhat Hanh is a Buddhist monk who lived through Vietnam and wars and came to this country and taught one of his basic teachings is a walking, kind of walking meditation. And he used mantras, which were just delightful. And uh, I mix them up a bit, but I enjoy that. And so sometimes when I, I place, when I lift my foot, I might say something to myself as I'm breathing in, because sometimes I like to put breath with the foot. So breathing in, the foot lifts. Breathing in, I am a flower. And then the foot comes down. Breathing out, I am a mountain. And I stay with that foot. It could be lifting the foot, breathing in. My mind goes in a thousand directions. Breathing out as the foot comes down. I am still, or I'm a still pond or lake. Just even 10 of these steps is transformative, absolutely transformative. So from past videos, you'll learn more uprightness, the ground, our first friend, the breath, our first friend, and then the rising up. And then while you're walking, there's also space all around. And I believe that as we're, if we are right on the earth, with every step, I kiss the ground. So if you were the earth, oh, wouldn't you feel just so loved? <laughs> How often do we really let the earth feel loved. Hmm. I remember a time when my husband and I were uh, traveling in, in Asia for many months uh, back in the day, and uh, we were on our way uh, to uh, Europe from Asia, and we were in Greece, I think. We were in the airport, and We'd really been living a, a very free, 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 quiet life. And all of a sudden we're in this Greek airport and we're sitting there on a bench and people are coming, millions of people it seemed like, well, there's just really thousands, but <laughs> plonking, hitting the ground with these heavy shoes and <laughs> we were just really um, kind of, oh my godness, the people are hitting the earth. Every step they're hitting it. So this is an opportunity to do the exact opposite, is to become one with, to listen to the earth, to be with her gently, to show her some love, and to be with yourself gently and not have to go anywhere. I mean, it's a perfect practice for the timelessness that we are in. So 10 steps could take you 10 minutes, 15 minutes. I have a little area in my yard that's uh, a circle, a circle of trees, and I walk there. I have a little center to that circle, and it's one of my life-giving 
uh, processes that I do during this time of timelessness. So walking meditation, finding your own words. Maybe each step is a prayer for someone you know. Be creative and enjoy.